Welcome everyone. I'm going to share with you what I've learned so far prepping for running Rime of the Frost Maiden, uh, starting in the Ten Towns area. My goal here is just to make your prep a little easier and hopefully to share a nugget or two that elevates Adventures League for all of us. I've already uh, been perusing all the different tip stuff on this campaign and got a lot of great information, so thank you so much for everyone who does that. So let's get started here on Rime of the Frost Maiden. This adventure is for character levels 1 through 11 slash 12, and it starts out in 10 towns. I'm going to be starting out in Bryn, uh, Bryn Shander, which is the biggest of the 10 towns right here in this map of the 10 towns that I got from uh, Mike Schley's website. He's a fantastic artist. This uh, picture and this animated picture here that I have, these come from the Patreon for James RPG art and uh, they're fantastic and hopefully he's going to do some more. You can see here the road up to Bryn Shander, the statue out there by the front gate, Kelvin's Cairn out in the distance. Um, just a gorgeous picture he, he did for us there. Okay, so this one, this first uh, video I'm doing is going to focus on uh, character knowledge. I like to give characters the knowledge or players the knowledge that their character can have ahead of the time if at all possible so that they can share it in-game organically. So I'm going to go through that information. So here we go with the working file where I uh, gathered all the information that I'm going to be sharing with the players. I have the blurb that goes with the adventure. Uh, Icewind Dale has become trapped in a perpetual winter. And it continues on and I share with them that it's the winter of 1489, Dale Reckoning. And then I go into all the information that only some of the PCs may know and that they can share if they want. So I have the potential hook for them, and that's from page, page 13 of the hardback, uh, based on their background for the character. And then I go through the secrets, and I uh, randomly pick two secrets to give to each person, and also tell them they can pick either of those two or make up their own. And they can, of course, share it or not as they like. Then we got the rumors that are on page 18 of the hardback. There's 10 of those rumors, one for each of the cities. And so there I take, and I take two or three, depending on, maybe even only one, depending on how much time I think they've spent in the area and share those randomly with players. And this way, the players, when they first start their first adventure, they'll be all gathered together over dinner, over drinks, um, or over uh, a dead body in an alley that's been partially eaten. We'll get to that in a second as a starting point. Um, and they're comparing notes. And I might even tweak the rumors a little bit so they're slightly different for the same rumor, so uh, they won't know exactly what's true, but they'll heard the rumors from that. Okay, so speaking to the start of the campaign, uh, there's two adventures to start the campaign. There's one um, where you're basically chasing after a murderer, and there's another one that involves Chewingas. And the murderer one, the murderer is pretty difficult to encounter. Oh, and before I go any further, uh, there will be spoilers abounding in this presentation, so if you're a player, please don't watch. I hope you haven't watched so far even. Um, but after you play the whole campaign, come back and take a look and let me know what, what worked good and what didn't. Okay, so back to the uh, the murderer. Very difficult encounter for first level characters, but uh, one of the DMs online, you know, pointed out an important point. You got to drop that uh, the start of that, but then it's kind of a hunt around ten towns. So there's no reason why they should be fighting the main bad guy right at first level. They should be second, third level by the time they run into him. So you got that. Um, also, the uh, the whole campaign can be really dark. I mean, figuratively, or figuratively speaking and literally speaking, it's very dark here. The times are desperate. The people should have reached a state of desperation, maniacal, uh, deranged, um, despondent, will do anything to survive, you know, that kind of level of, of fear that's in the populace of this area after two years of darkness. So for the madman, rather than just introduce him, as, hey, go, this guy's done these things, go get him. Introduce him by what the results are, the cannibalism that he's inflicting upon the people and things like that. So the players could run across a person um, who's been partially eaten and see tracks sliding away in the snow. And that could be the first clue if something's wrong in that regard. Okay, so now back to what players can know. So we got the rumors. Then if any of the players have some good 10 town background, they could certainly have uh, information about the ten towns, who, what they are, the main characters in each, the population in each. They could have information about the four tribes of the Reked Nomads and which ones are indifferent to outsiders, which ones are hostile to outsiders. 
Um, if they were a rakehead nomad, they could know even more, like who the members of the tribe are, the names, reputations, the prominent members. I haven't actually broken that out yet because they haven't declared to do that yet. Um, or if they're just a resident of the Ten Towns plus they're an outlander or a trader or something like that, I might add that extra information. And then if they're a mountain goliath, or again, outlander or trader, I might add that information about goliaths. That's, so the rakeheads, appendix C, the goliaths are described in chapter 2. Uh, valley dwarves would know about uh, the dwarven valley that the goblins carry. Okay, now we get into character knowledge based on skills. So characters with a history skill would know a little bit about Krenshinaban from page 6 to the hardback. That more than a hundred years ago, a wizard named Akar Kessel found an artifact suffused with demonic magic called Krenshinaban, better known as the Crystal Shard and used it to erect a great black tower in Icewind Dale. Okay, so they could know that. Then if they had history and um, favorite enemy fiends, or history and spoke, with, spoke abyssal, I might add a little bit more of this uh, air to, was it Baylor Demon that terrorized Icewind Dale over a century ago? That's on page 70 of the hardback. If they had a religion or favorite enemy fiend, I could add this extra part about Shardolin. This is from page six as well. Chardolin is a black, non-magic, crystalline substance as strong as metal, but considerably easier to work than steel. It tends to be suffused with demonic magic, and it goes on from there. And then uh, if they have arcana skill, they might know a little bit about the arcane nature of Chardolin. A black, non-magic, crystalline substance it tends to be suffused with demonic magic. It's cold to the touch, readily accepts magical enchantment. That's again on page 6. Now, if they have arcane, uh, arcana as a skill, they would know about the arcane brotherhood. The Kabbalah powerful wizards from Luskin. So that's on page 268. So you can give a little bit of hint about foreshadowing what they're going to run into there. If they have nature skill, uh, some knowledge about Chewingus, the tiny elemental spirits that live in plants and rocks and rivers far from civilization. That's on page 283. Uh, if they know religion, they would know about some of the gods the parties can run into. So of course we have Ariel the Frost Maiden. God of cold and indifference who embodies winter's cruelty. And that's on page 208 and page 274. Her holy symbol is a snowflake. Uh, Sylvanus got a nature. His holy symbol is an oak leaf. That's on page 76. Um, some more information for Goliaths on page 291. At the highest mountain peaks far above the slopes where trees grow, where the air is thin and frigid winds howl, well, the reclusive Goliaths. Few other folk can truthfully claim to have seen a Goliath, and fewer still have forged a friendship with one. So there I might do Goliath characters, and I could do other characters that are outlanders or traitors, etc. And then we got Rakehead Nomads uh, from page 305, again, outlanders, traitors, or Rakeheads. Alright, so that's the information I would share going into the campaign with the players. Give them multiple rumors that may or may not conflict with each other. Give them their secrets, their potential hooks, uh, and then information they might know just by being Ten Towner, etc. Now, once they've completed their adventures in Ten Towns, they will hopefully run into the uh, Duergar, chasing after the Shardolin, so their interest will be peaked there. And uh, here's some more information that I'll give out at the start of Chapter 2. So of course we have the tall tales on page 102. Uh, that just kind of leads to exploration outside of the Ten Towns. Religion again, uh, information about Yagnu, Inogu, uh, Mistral, and Thrym. So Inogu is on page 122. Mistral has got a magic and first incarnation of Mistra. Her symbol is a four-pointed star. Interestingly, in some parts of the adventure, it says eight-pointed star, and some it says four-pointed star. I need to look that up to verify which it is. Okay, I just checked that. Uh, Mist Mistral's holy symbol is a four-pointed star. So this is correct, and where it appears either on page 150 or 220 or one other place in this adventure, it says eight-pointed, and that'd be the incorrect one. Okay, so if someone has religion and history, this is a higher religion check in the adventure, but I'd add this info in. The history and fate of the god Mistral are tied up in the story of Mithril's fall. Mistral was the original god of magic, etc. And if someone has religion and arcana, I have to give a misinformation. Holy shrines to Mistral are rare places and often full of mystery. If someone has religion and dwarf, they speak dwarven or underdark, I tell them about deep 
uh, Duera, the lawful evil god of conquest and static power. That's on page 174 and 182. Then basic religion is Thrym, the evil god of frost giants, on page 207. Savras, the god of divination, on page 243. Now, if someone has nature, uh, white dragon eggs or bluish white and as large as a halfling, party can run a destiny like that. That's on page 125. If someone has history and music, or history and their bard, or maybe if they're just a higher level bard, they would know that the quote, the dark between the stars, unquote, is a legendary piece of music created by the Netherese. Oh, I don't have a page reference for that, but let me grab that real quick. Okay, I found that. That's on page 257 for that. Now, if someone has history, uh, vehicle, water, pirate, sailor, some combinations of those, they would know about a red eel wrapped around a gold trident being the symbol of the ship. Souljack, a powerful faction in the Muskin that engages in piracy. They would know a story too about Captain Blue Moon, and they can actually fill that in. And how he was cruel and cunning. Uh, page 129 of that. Someone had nature, and I haven't figured out exactly what they had to this, if they have what other skills they would need to have, but they might know about the Queen, and say like people with a hard carapace and forearms on page 147. Arcana. Um, again, maybe if they know Netherese or history or something along those lines. You know that Netherese spellcasters would come to towers decorated with shifting geometric patterns to regain their spent magic more quickly. That comes about on page 1220. Uh, history, the Empire Nethril arose more than 5,000 years ago. The Netherese legacy began with, and it goes on from there. And that's from page 232. If they know religion and their Rakehead tribesmen, or they have some reason to be connected with Rakehead tribesmen, uh, they would know about Tekali Li, who was a fang of Yinagu, a powerful knoll whose pack invaded Icewind Dale more than a century ago. Uh, from there, that's on page 291. All right, so there's a lot of history, a lot of religion, a lot of arcana. Really cool, really richly packed in this adventure. Those are the ones I found so far. I've pretty much gone through it all so far, but if you come up with any others that you'd like to share ahead of time with the players so they can share it in-game, organically, uh, let me know. Comment below. And if you like this, please uh, like and subscribe to the video. Thank you very much, and good luck in Icewind Dale.